let's be real here, you know I'm gonna use that in-store credit without a problem. Today we are starting off our day shopping at Goodwill and we are in Beaverton, Oregon. There are three different Goodwills located in Beaverton that I frequent regularly and we're going to start at one of my very favorite ones this morning. This looks like it is a Scandinavian candle holder. I love the bright red color on this and I have a collection I'll show you back at the studio that I'm gonna add this one to. You know I have a thing for containers. I love to have vintage containers to put everything from Q-tips to nails to loose leaf tea in. And when I spotted this down the aisle, it reminded me immediately of Morocco. This one is for sure going in the cart. Our Goodwills get a lot of donations from Target and other big box stores locally. I think they do this seasonally every time, say, Target is getting new items in. They donate their overstock to our local Goodwills. These benches are almost tempting, but I just know that they're not going to hold up as well as if I find vintage ones and then get them powder coated. The shape and design on these benches is fabulous, and if I found them at a roadside garage sale for 10 bucks, I would absolutely be picking them up, but they were not. They are $99 here at Goodwill. I pretty much only have two main pieces that I'm looking for for my sister's bedroom makeover till I can get it complete and share the reveal with all of you. I am looking for a bedroom chandelier and curtains. I have one set of curtains that might work for the space, but they are a bit wild and I'm not positive my sister's going to love them, but they're so fun and I can't wait to show you what they are. So I am also looking for a more neutral linen colored pair that I know for sure will work. Sometimes it's good to have a wild option and a more safe option. Option. I feel like one could never have too many cutting boards and maybe that's because I decorate with them all the time but I am looking for some chunky cutting boards for the studio space to design with. I like the size and the wood grain on this. It is only $4.99. Just kidding it's not a cutting board. It looks like it used to be a shelf. All right never mind we're not gonna get this one. This little wooden vase is kind of tempting. It's only $2.99. And you know I love a good wooden vase, but it's just not standing out as unique enough today. Well, not bad, but not great either. At least we didn't end up leaving empty handed. I'm not positive that those curtains are going to work for my sister's bedroom. They might be a standard size, but there was no sizing on the tag. And I decided, you know what? They're the exact shade of linen that I was looking for. I'm going to go ahead and risk it. The great thing is our local Goodwills do have a return policy. So for 14 days, you can get in-store credit. And let's be real here. You know I'm going to use that in-store credit without a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and risk it. I'm going to stop by my sisters on the way home and check and see if they're going to work. And if not, I will return them for the in-store credit. I'm really excited about this. I don't think this is that old. This is probably some kind of a reproduction, but it's absolutely beautiful and it's very, very heavy. And I think this is going to be wonderful in the new studio space because I have a very Moroccan theme and I love the combination of the silver and the glass. It was only $7.99, so even if it is a reproduction of an antique style, I think it's really beautiful and it's going to be a perfect addition to the studio. It's all in the details. Having little things that have the feel that you're going for really make the space pull together and just feel like a unique space that there was thought put into the design. And I'm really, really excited with how the studio office is coming along and I don't know what I'm going to put in this. I may end up leaving it empty, but I think it's just going to be really pretty sitting on a shelf or the windowsill. And then this is not very valuable. These only sell online for around $20 to $25. They're folk art hand painted Scandinavian candle holders. And this one is kind of fun because it doesn't have any design on it. It's just the solid red. I have a few more of these candle holders that are from Sweden and they've got different designs on them. So this will be really great to mix and match with those. I'm working on building a very Scandinavian Christmas collection. So this guy for $2.99 was worth it for me and he's going to the Christmas stash for next year. Okay let's go ahead and hit the road and head to the next Goodwill. We only found a couple things in here but hopefully we will find more at the next stop.
I am on the hunt for a couple different entry tables for decorating with in the new design studio. This one is a little tempting because it has the lighter blonde wood, which I am looking for, and it has a very simple minimal style, but it's still $60 and it's just not a high quality built piece. I'm going to hold out and see if I can find an actual vintage one that's real solid wood. This is kind of an adorable handmade pottery sage container. It doesn't have the original lid, which probably would have been a cork topper. I think this originally was probably made with a set, so they would have had other herbs too. And that would have been really neat to find the entire set. I love this beautiful vase. It has such a unique coloring combination with the mustardy orange and the beautiful blue. It is $9.99. It does say as is, and I think that's because there are quite a few chips around this bottom rim. It is such a beautiful vase, and $9.99 for a vase this size is not a bad deal, so we are going to get her. This looks like it probably was from the 1970s. It was very popular to do these resin-filled, you know, agate coffee tables and bowls and trivets. I love this one because of the leaves and the stars of anise in it. It is only $4.99. It does have the original sticker and it looks like it was made in Italy. It does have a few light scratches on the surface, but we might be able to get those out. We're going to get it for $4.99 and we're going to take it back to the studio and do some research on this artist. Sorry if it's a little bumpy, I'm in the car right now driving, but we did find a couple really beautiful things. I love that Austrian vase and I really, really like that Lucite bowl. I don't know how valuable that artist is. I haven't looked up his pieces yet, so we'll look that up when we get back to the studio. But I thought it's kind of fun. It reminded me of a lot of the stuff that you see in the 1970s with resin and acrylic and Lucite. So I thought it was worth grabbing. And now we're headed to our last stop of the day, but the thrifting's not gonna end there because I do have some amazing vintage to show you that I got with Jesse over the weekend. We went antique shopping in Gresham. So we'll get to this Goodwill, we'll see what we can find, and then we will head back to the studio. Goodwill is a great place to get candles for a fraction of the price that they are brand new. And since candles are not a super sought after item here at Goodwill, you can often find them with the half off color tag. Okay, I am absolutely not getting this giant piece of 1980s art, but how fantastic is this with the panther on it? I know a vintage dealer from Portland is going to be very excited when they come across this here at Goodwill. I'm not familiar with the signature, so if any of you know who this artist is, please comment below. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out that this is a fairly valuable piece. It's ginormous, it's outrageous, it is so much fun, and I hope I see it pop up on someone's Instagram feed down the road. Here is another candle. This one's got some fabulous shape on it and it is only $2.99. I am finding candles in every single aisle here at Goodwill. These are going to be great for decorating with at Christmas because they look like snowballs. I've been looking for a variety of different trays to decorate with. Even though this one has quite a bit of damage and it is a modern made piece, I think it's going to be great for decorating with and I might even be able to use it in my sister's bedroom makeover on the bookshelf. And it happens to be the color off today, so it's half price. Well, I may not have found a ton of vintage today. I did find some really great stuff and I am excited to play around here in the design studio and show you a few different ways that I would decorate with these items. But before we get to that, I wanna show you what I found out antique shopping with Jesse over the weekend. 
remembers a few episodes back when I spotted this beauty at Poppy and Dale Vintage. She's what you call top shelf, <laughs> literally. She was up on top of a shelf and she was not for sale. The vendor, all the stuff and things PDX, was planning on using her for putting clothes on and just keeping as a prop for their space. And I completely understand that. You never know unless you ask, so I figured it was worth a try. I reached out to Darren to find out if he was willing to sell her, even though it had a not for sale sticker on it. And not only was he willing to sell her to me, he actually gifted her to me. I was not expecting that. So I have to give a huge thank you to Darren. I really, really appreciate it. And this lady is gonna be used a lot in this studio. And I can't wait to get started photographing beautiful jewelry pieces on her. Since Darren was so kind to throw a little bit of love my way, I thought it would be wonderful if I could throw some love his way. And I would be so grateful for those of you who are into amazing vintage, which I know most of you are, to go follow him on Instagram. I will put his Instagram handle up here, all the stuff and things PDX. Thank you so much, Darren. I always love visiting Courtney's shop, Poppy and Dale Vintage, because not only does she do this, but all of her vendors are really good at bringing in new inventory. We all know that antique store or thrift store that every time you go in, it's the same stuff on the shelf and it's got a layer of dust on it. That is not the case at Poppy and Dale Vintage. Every time I go in there, I end up walking out with something amazing because there's such high turnover on the amazing vintage. I went there to go pick up up my beautiful wicker lady, but I ended up also leaving with this beautiful Japanese Ikebana vase. You know that I love my Japanese minimalist vases, especially when they have a pedestal, and I really loved the texture and the color on this one. I'm currently in the middle of multiple projects. I've got my sister's bedroom makeover like 80 to 90% done. I've got the office, which is about 50% done, and I am also working on a living room makeover in our own home, and I've made some real progress lately. But one of the things that I noticed when I was putting out all of my beautiful Italian pottery was that I needed some more muted neutral tones to balance out the vibrant colors in my Italian pottery. So I was very excited to find this. I think it's going to be a great addition to my existing pottery collection in the living room. While we were out and about, Jesse and I also decided to stop into another favorite vintage store that I haven't been to in a long time, Red Fox Vintage, which is in the Selwood area in Portland. And as soon as we walked in the door in the very first space, I immediately found something I knew I was going to bring home with me. One of my 2024 or 2025 goals is to finally make it to Egypt. Jesse and I have wanted to go for ages and I think we might be able to make it happen. So stay tuned because it's gonna be a group trip. I don't know when I am announcing the official trip launch, but it's probably gonna be either in 2024 or 2025. And when I saw these beautiful stone pyramids, I thought this would be a really great addition to the bookshelf. Again, I was looking for more neutral colored items to balance out all of the colors I already have. These are great for using as bookends because obviously they're made out of stone so they're very heavy but I also think they look beautiful sitting on a tray or just a stack of books and they were only $10 each.
Another fabulous piece that I found at Red Fox Vintage is this handmade lady. She is so beautiful. Her hairdo looks very 1960s and I love sculptural pieces and of course the fact that it's made out of clay really made me fall in love with her. If you were decorating a bookshelf or a credenza, you really want to make sure that you have a few large pieces. It's really easy for us to pick up these smaller trinket items, but you really want to have some larger pieces to balance everything out. And you can't go wrong with a life-size head bust. <laughs> I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. And you can easily make your website stand out and be beautiful by using one of their many, many customizable templates. I have been selling my vintage finds on my Squarespace website for over nine years now. And with this new year, I'm thinking it's time for a website refresh. So I've been having fun going through all of their templates and getting ideas, trying to decide what I want to do with my website for this new year. Change can be a good thing and it's important to keep your content and your website looking fresh. And Squarespace makes it so easy with everything you need right here in one location. Not only will your website be beautiful and easy to build out the way you want it, it will help you engage with your audience, sell anything you want, your products, your content, what you create, and even your time. Squarespace makes it easy to connect to your other social media account. You can set it up so that you automatically display posts from your other social media profiles and you can automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. Head to squarespace.com to start your free seven day trial and when you are ready to launch your website, head to squarespace.com slash left coast for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I also wanted to give you an update on this fantastic hand carved wooden monk. Now I picked this up at Habitat for Humanity last week for $6. And even though I couldn't read the signature when I first found it, I went home, I started doing some research and I figured out that it said Leo Salazar carved into the bottom. When I looked up Leo Salazar, I found some sculptures for sale on eBay under the name Leonardo Salazar. So I just assumed that Leo Salazar was short for Leonardo. Well, thanks to a lot of you here on YouTube for sharing some information and links with me, I found out that Leo is actually the father. He is the original carved wood sculptor and he trained his son Leonardo how to sculpt wood and his pieces sell for even higher than his son's. A few of you sent links with his listings upwards of $1,200. So originally thinking that this was a Leonardo Salazar piece, I estimated it was worth around 700, but it turns out it might be worth even more. There were a lot of reasons why I wanted to travel to Morocco. The architecture, the culture, the food, the markets, and I have always had a love for Moroccan design. So it was really amazing to be there in person and get very inspired. When we came back from that trip, I knew that when we got a studio space, I wanted my office to have a very eclectic Moroccan feel to it. And it has been so much fun putting that space together. And I think that this is gonna work really well in the space. I'm very into monochrome, and I'm thinking that I may end up using this in the kitchen area. You know that I love my salt, especially truffle salt. So I was thinking how funny would it be to fill this whole thing with truffle salt? I don't know, maybe I'll put some loose leaf tea in it. It's probably a little bit big for truffle salt. I always love finding things that aren't necessarily that valuable, but that you've been on the hunt for. And I was really excited to come across this Scandinavian candle holder. It was only $2.99. Jesse and I are working on building our Scandinavian Christmas collection, and I have the perfect little stash of candle holders to add this to. Typically when I'm out thrifting, I'm really just looking for something that catches my eye and that I think is beautiful. Obviously you want things that are functional and that you know are gonna get used rather than discarded, but I'm pretty much just looking for something that I think is beautiful. So even if I come across something that doesn't typically hold value, I see value in its beauty. And I knew that this was a beautiful vase. Obviously it's gorgeous, but I had no idea how old it was. The stamp on the bottom gave me a little bit of an idea 
idea that it could be an older piece, but I was very surprised when I started looking up this Austrian stamp and learned that it might actually be from the 1930s. While I was doing research online, I did find another one that had this exact same made in Austria stamp that had the WKF marking on it, along with a few numbers. It didn't look like in their listing they knew exactly who the maker was, but they did seem to believe that it was from the 1930s. And while I was doing homework on this, it reminded me that I've been wanting to ask all of you to put your favorite pottery identification books in the comments below. I know as someone who is always looking to add new identification books to my personal collection, I think the information would be really helpful and we can maybe all pool all of our knowledge together in the comments below. I will go ahead and add a few of my favorite identification books and pin that comment in the comments below. So if any of you guys have any pottery or jewelry or textile identification books that you would highly recommend to others wanting to learn more about vintage and antiques, put it down in the comments below and we can all share all of our knowledge together and keep learning. Sometimes you get lucky and you might not know the history of a piece, but there will be a sticker on it that tells you what it is. This is a 1970s Ricardo Marzi Lucite Bowl and it's got leaves, stars of a knee, cinnamon sticks. It is such a beautiful bowl. I got it for only $4.99 and these retail online anywhere from around $20 to $180, just depending on the size of the bowl and probably how good of condition it is in. The bowl was obviously used and well loved, so it does have a lot of surface scratches on it. I have never cleaned up a Lucite bowl before, and I would love your advice if there is a product that you recommend putting on it and buffing out some of the light scratches. I have done this to vintage sunglasses before with minimal success, and I just don't want to ruin this beautiful bowl. So before I touch it, I wanted to ask your advice. If any of you have ever used a specific product, please let me know in the comments below. I didn't find a ton of vintage at the three Goodwill locations today, but I'm still happy with my haul overall. And while candles might not seem like a very exciting find, they come in very handy when I am decorating here in the studio and I'm staging items for my website. Buying candles secondhand at Goodwill can be about one tenth of the cost of buying these brand new. I got six of these unburned white snowball candles for only $4.99. And I especially love this one because of the unique shape on it and the ribbed design. This tray ended up being the color of the week, so it was half off. The price on it was $3.99. I ended up getting it for only $1.99. And even though it's not in perfect condition, I think it works really well and in a way kind of almost has a little bit more of a vintage old world feel to it because of the staining on it. I'm either gonna be using this in my sister's bedroom makeover or here in the studio for staging. But if you were buying this for your home, don't forget you can always paint something. If it's a new product and it's not an actual antique, don't be afraid to paint it. There are so many different things that you can put on a tray. I love to do staggered candles, so I will use multiple heights. Often I will use different textures and even different colors. I really think that keeps it nice and interesting. By the way, I wish that I had had these little snowball candles a few weeks ago because when I found this candle holder, I was ready to start filming and decorating and I realized I had no candles that fit on the top of it here in the studio. Had some at home, but not here in the studio. So now I've got lots of candles to decorate with and I'm definitely gonna keep working on building my candle collection. Thank you so much for coming Goodwill shopping with me today and letting me share my adventures out and my beautiful finds with you. I had fun decorating here in the the studio and I've got some really fun and exciting content coming your way so don't forget to subscribe because it's gonna be good and you're not gonna want to miss it for those of you who are new here I list my vintage finds the first Friday of every single month in my online vintage store leftcoastrevivals.com typically I list items the following month from when they were found and I've got some amazing things including some of the things from today's episode that are coming to my February 3rd first Friday sale I typically list around 200 vintage items each month and things do go really 
really fast. So you're gonna wanna make sure to be on the website right when the sale launches at 3 p.m. Pacific time. If you wanna see a sneak peek of some of the items that are coming to my next shop sale, you can head to my website, leftcoastrevivals.com and subscribe to my newsletter and you will get a sneak peek and you will be the first to know as soon as the sale goes live. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day and I will see you in a brand new episode soon.